Hello YouTubers, this old sword back again. Uh, this is a review of a knife that I have come to enjoy quite a bit. I would not hesitate to say it's near and dear to me. That doesn't mean it's a daily carry necessarily, but it's a knife that has been somewhat maligned elsewhere by some other reviewers, or at least questioned for how safe it might be. Well, you've probably seen a recent review I did on the Kershaw Balasong, the Lucha. And, uh, you know, Balasongs can be deemed to be unsafe. Because if you don't know what you're doing with them, you're going to cut yourself. And you could drop it on your foot, or it could go flying off and hit somebody across the room, etc., etc. Well, this is a Wii knife. It goes by the name of blocao, and it's a Spanish word. And as I understand the translation, it means blockhouse or brick house. It is a design by a Spanish knife maker, Miguel Barbuda. Barbudo. Let me make sure I got his name right. Barbuda. And I'll correct that later if my spelling's wrong. It's kind of small on the knife. This is... I would say, in anybody's estimation, a beautiful knife. It's a handsome knife. It's uh, an awesome knife. It is um, by the Wee Knife Company. Again, the design, Miguel Barbuda. And check him out on Instagram. You want to see some absolutely gorgeous pieces in Damascus in exotic materials in kind of the Spanish tradition. So this blade is very much done in kind of a Spanish, um, I'm not sure the name of the knife, you may know it. There's a ratcheting knife that's carried by the gypsies and um, makes lots of noise when you open it. Clack, 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 and so forth. Well, this blade style and in part the locking method is very similar. But before we get too much into the action, let's talk a little about the materials. We have marbled carbon fiber. Really beautiful. We have a Wee's famous stone wash that it almost looks like stone, to tell you the truth, when you get it in the right light. You got the Wee emblem. It's a thumb stud opener, not a flipper. The blade is a very impressive four and a quarter inches with just under a four inch cutting edge. The overall, uh, coming up on nine and three eighths. It is not necessarily a light knife. Got my little magnet hanging on to everything these days. Almost six and a half ounces. And why is that? Well, no weight relieving. Solid titanium titanium slabs. 
and a full back strap because it is a locked back knife. We have a titanium clip, very nicely milled in the Wii tradition with the um, hash marks there. Blade is completely stonewashed out of uh, S35VN. Just all in all, um, I've really been enjoying knives like the... Uh, oh, what is it now? The... Um, I'll think of the name in a minute. Various Wii Knives which have uh, this same stonewashed finish. Uh, Scopio, S-C-O-P-P-I-O. -O. Uh, just sent that one out to um, Dirk on the West Coast and had also sent this one out. And he did a very nice review on this knife as well. So we'll get into some more measurements. We've got the weight and we've got the length and whatnot. Well, we may as well finish it up and let's do the handle width thickness 0.58 almost a 6 0 and we've got four millimeters blade stock nice hefty blade stock so we've got a long somewhat heavy knife of quality materials. It's a brute, really. The ergos on it are absolutely amazing. Um, you've got two finger grooves and then your last two fingers can rest where they want. So whatever size hand you got, you can probably fit your fingers into the first two grooves. Uh, there is Unfortunately, perhaps, uh, no jimping. Nice smooth edges here. Your hand locks in so well that I don't think your thumb's going to go anywhere. I can bear down really well without feeling as though I'm going to slip off. Got a long lanyard slot in the back that's part of the frame minus the handle slabs at that point. We have really, I was going to say flush, but really countersunk screws with flat heads, T8s, I believe. And um, you have a usable choil area here in the blade, not really defined, and a very nice sharpening choil that I think a lot of people appreciate with a nice termination of the edge right there. So, let's talk about the controversial part of this knife. It is what's called a window lock. It's a lock back release, but rather than have the blade abut the spring here, if you want to call it a spring, the lock bar, in a um, fashion kind of like what um, cold steel does. We have a different setup. So when it's released, you see that on the lock bar is a cutout. And that cutout engages the notch on the blade. It raises up and then positively locks in place. And it locks like a drum. I would say Cold Steel's triad lock probably has nothing over this in terms of strength. We're not gonna clamp it in a vise and put weights on it to find out, but um, if somebody wants to do that, pick up a copy and you know, feel free to do some testing. So again, the controversial part. We have a lock back with a blade on bearings. 
it'll swing freely. It reaches this point here and the same thing that locked it open locks it closed. So, right there. There it locks in place. Here's the thing. If you flick it out and expect it to lock all the way with a moderate amount or even light amount of force, it can bounce back on your fingers if they're holding the handle here. Three ways to open it I've found. Roll it out with a firm push on the thumb stud. When closing it, hold it level, just let it drop. Close it the rest of the way. You can still do it with one hand. Open it with two hands, like a conventional buck 110. Or give it a good amount of force. A little bit of wrist action there. Snaps right open every time. I've never had it fail. Only going to fail if you're wimpy with it. So is it like every other flipper you've used? No. Is it like every other lockback or thumb stud opener you've used? No. Because it swings freely on bearings from the moment that that tension is released from the lock until it snaps open. Once again, really not that hard to open. So there have been some reviewers that said, oh, it's a dangerous knife. Uh, you never want to hand it to somebody that doesn't know knives. Um, I find that's true with a lot of knives, though. I don't know that I'd give a steak knife to somebody that didn't know how to use it or didn't appreciate what a sharp knife is. Um, this is different. It requires uh, knowledge of how it works. Kind of if you went from an automatic to a uh, five-speed manual, you got to know how to operate it. So, no, you don't just hand this to somebody that's been using knives with bushings or that have a lot more friction up here and uh, don't swing freely back and forth. That's the thing you got to remember. So this would either be your everyday carry or be familiar with it as soon as you pick it up and know what it is. Or you just put it in the collection and uh, you understand, hey, it's the blow cow when you uh, use it. I don't want to get long-winded about this, but it is a really nice well-made, well-designed knife that I appreciate having in my collection. And I think it's probably going to stay there. Let's check it out next to the Rat 1. Rat 1, as you can see, is a um, significantly smaller knife, even though it usually is the biggest. Griptilian. Fairly small next to it. Remember, you're talking a four and a quarter inch blade. So I was thinking of calling this in defense of the blocal. <laughs> but I think I won't. It doesn't need defending. Lastly, is it a knife? Does it cut? Absolutely. Most wee knives come through razor sharp, shall we say. I think we've covered all the finer details of this guy. If I missed anything, feel free to ask questions. Leave your comments. And don't forget to give this video a like. And if you haven't already, 
Please subscribe. There's more coming. This Old Sword, signing out.